There are so many curly hair products on the market these days, all aiming to be the best at taming frizz or defining your curls. But because there's so many to choose from, it can be difficult to know what's actually right for your hair. Do you need a gel? Should you opt for a curl cream or a leave-in conditioner? And what on earth is the difference between a foam and a mousse? In this video, I'm gonna break down the most common types of curly hair styling products, the purpose of each, and which hair type they're best suited to. If you're not already subscribed, please do subscribe to my channel. I post new videos about twice a month. So yeah, let's go ahead. We're starting off with the first product that you would apply to your hair after shampooing and conditioning, and that is leave-in conditioner and or curl cream. Because a lot of curly hair is naturally dry, adding a leave-in conditioner or curl cream after rinsing out your regular conditioner can add moisture back into your hair and help it stay moisturized between wash days, prevent tangles and frizzing. But what's the difference between a leave-in conditioner and a curl cream? Leave-ins usually have a lighter consistency than curl creams. It works in the same way as a regular conditioner that you rinse out of your hair but leave-in conditioners are formulated to be left in the hair to help keep your hair moisturized and conditioned between wash days. Curl creams on the other hand are very similar to leave-in conditioners in the fact that they are to moisturize our hair, stop our hair from drying out and knotting between wash days but lots of curl creams also have styling properties which help define our curls and some even add hold to our hair to help our curls last between washes. So which product should you choose, leave-in conditioner or curl cream. Because leave-in conditioners are usually more lightweight than curl creams, they're a really good option for every hair type really, but they're especially good for fine hair that gets weighed down easily. Curl creams on the other hand can be more suited to medium to coarse hair, but they do come in a variety of different consistencies. So think of it like thick curl creams are good for coarse hair, whereas thinner consistency products are going to be better for finer hair because they're not going to weigh your hair down as much. So here is an example of a thicker curl cream but this is actually very good for my medium texture hair and the reason that products like this can be a bit too heavy for fine hair if you use too much is because they contain ingredients like butters like shea butter which can weigh finer hair down this can look and feel like greasy hair a wet look on your hair and it can just feel producty and it may also elongate your curls stretch your curls out and that's what we mean by weighing your curls down I probably use about this much and the thing with curl creams is they can be very concentrated just get a little bit on your hand mix it together and you will see just how concentrated it is that would be enough for my entire head. Whereas something like this is a leave-in conditioner spray. It's actually called a curl primer, but this is very lightweight and you'll find that the ones that are more watery are more lightweight for your hair. So if you find that your hair gets weighed down very easily, then opt for maybe a spray one, but you'll find that this is very much a thin consistency. So if I mix it together in my hands like this, it's really not very concentrated at all. So that is just a little something to bear in mind when you are looking for products and trying to decide how heavy they are. It can definitely be confusing when it comes to product names because a lot of things are called creams when they're actually more leave-in conditioners and some things are called curl primers, some things are called curl definers. So definitely always read the product to see a bit more of a description of what it does as well. So for instance, this one, the Curl Smith Shine Cream is one of my favorites, but it is a leave-in conditioner but it's called Shine Cream because it is a cream, but it doesn't have any really styling properties. This is more gonna help add moisture to your hair. I do find that this helps define my curls as well, but it doesn't help define my curls as much as something like the Hold Me Softly Style Balm, which is a styling cream for curly and wavy hair. Then you kind of have like hybrid products like this as well. And in my experience, these kind of products that are in pump bottles or spray bottles like this are usually leaving Conditioners, but they usually have defining properties as well. So this one is a curl primer, define and reshape. And this one is 
the Curl Enhancing Hydrating Lotion, but they're both very lightweight, so I'll show you on my hand. So I'll mix this together in my hand, very lightweight. So with any curl cream, I would always say less is more. Start with a small amount and work your way up if you find that your hair needs a bit more moisture. Most people really do not need to use both a leave-in conditioner and a curl cream, but some people with coarser hair or very dry hair find that layering a leave-in conditioner first and then a curl cream that can really help moisturize and define their curls. So they'll use a leave-in conditioner first, but it may not be enough moisture. So then they'll use a curl cream on top, which will give a little bit more moisture, but also define the curls. But this would be too much for my hair type, which is medium texture. And so it would be too much for fine hair as well. Next up is mousse and foam. I have actually really come to enjoy mousses and foams over the last few years so they are building up a nice big collection on my product shelf but one of the most common questions i get asked is what is the difference between mousse and foam. Mousses and foams often have different purposes but again the word is used interchangeably so it can be a little bit confusing so definitely always check the bottle to get a better description of what the product does. The main difference between foams and mousses is their containers. So foams are usually in pump bottles like this and mousses are usually in aerosol can bottles like this one. So the way that these containers dispense the products mean that the products come out in different consistencies so foams for example tend to be more of a watery consistency they are wetter and more lightweight so you can see that this has quite a thin lightweight foamy consistency kind of like bath foam whereas mousses are a bit creamier in consistency they come up very differently to foams more concentrated and a bit more moisturizing i would say both foams and mousses are very lightweight so they work really well for most hair types especially fine hair and hair that gets weighed down very easily in my experience foams are good for adding grit and texture to the hair they're great for adding volume they can help define your curls but they don't really add hold some do add some hold but they're both great at adding volume but mousses are a bit more moisturizing a bit more concentrated they help define your curls and they have a little bit of hold however because their main purpose is to add volume you may find that on their own they don't give you enough moisture or enough hold so in that case you may need to use a curl cream underneath for more moisture or a gel on top for more hold next up is gels hair gels help define and enhance our curls and add hold to give our wash days longevity, prevent frizz, and keep our definition in place for longer. Once dry, as I'm sure you'll know, most gels dry hard on the hair or with a crunchy cast, but do not be alarmed, this is completely normal. It's called a gel cast. It also happens with mousses, and it's to protect the hair while it's drying. But once your hair is fully dry, just simply scrunch your hair and it will release the cast and your hair will be soft underneath. If it's not, you've probably applied too much. I really think that every hair type can benefit from gel, but similar to curl creams, there are different consistencies and also different hold levels. So just because one gel didn't work for you, do not rule out all gels because there could be one out there that is perfect for your hair type. So gels normally come in a light, medium and strong hold, and they'll usually say on the bottle what level of hold they are, but from my experience, the thicker, more gloopy gels like this Cole Smith Shine Gel are the stronger hold ones. The stickier ones. But if you mix them together with water in your hands before applying, it will make them less sticky, make them easier to distribute, and also prevent you from applying too much. If your hair is naturally very curly, but you just kind of want to define your curls a little bit more, but with a soft hold, then I would opt for a lightweight gel. But if you find that your hair can get very frizzy very easily, or you have loose curls like me that can stretch out as the days go by, then I would opt for a strong hold gel. A couple of my favorites are the Curlsmith In Shower Style Fixer and the Curlsmith Shine Gel. Some of my favorite high street stronghold gels are the Harry's Sculpting Gel and the Giovanni LA Hold. Some of my favorite gels are actually lighter to medium hold gels. These two, for example, I think are very good beginner's gels. If you are just getting into curly hair products and you wanna try a gel but you're not really sure, these two are very good to use, especially this one because it's really hard to apply too much of this gel. Next up is another product that is kind of in the realm of gels 
styles as well and that is custards and souffles and I've put them together because don't they just sound like a delicious dessert? I feel like they are similar products but the word is definitely used interchangeably. Some are more of a jelly-like consistency and others are more of a cream consistency. For me I would say that souffles are usually more jelly-like like this one from Curl Smith. It has more of a jelly-like consistency. It has kind of like a silky consistency on the hair so if you find that stronghold gels add too much grit to your hair or they're too dry and then something like a souffle could be very good for you but I do find that curl custards are usually a bit heavier so they may not be best for fine hair so as well as defining the curls and adding some hold to their hair most souffles and custards will also add a level of moisture to the hair so if you want light moisture and hold in one product then this could be the product for you but I do find a very small amount goes a long way because they are usually quite concentrated. So because of this, I would say they are best suited to medium to coarse hair, but even for my hair, I find that I need to use a lot of them to get the level of hold that I want, but then that's actually too heavy for my hair. So I prefer to use a strong hold gel with a bit of curl cream underneath because I just find that that gives me the right amount of moisture and hold. But then you also have gel creams or cream gels, which are a different product, but they're basically curl custards, I would say. So you see that kind of like jelly like creamy consistency slightly different so this is more creamy whereas this is more jelly like and another example of a gel cream which i would say is a completely different product to both of them is this one from naughty it's a minefield guys texturizing products i talk a lot about texturizing products on my channel and on my instagram page because i have hair that while it needs a little bit of moisture to prevent it from tangling between wash days, it's also very silky and soft at the root. So products like texture sprays add texture, grit, and volume to the hair. They can be great if you have naturally soft hair, fine hair that needs extra hold, or silky roots that can fall flat like I have. You can get wet or dry texture sprays. Wet texture sprays are usually salt sprays or volumizing sprays, and you add them before you dry your hair. And I haven't really experimented with them. This has been sent to me recently, so I'm gonna play around with it. But this is my favorite. This is a dry texture spray. This is the one from Umberto Giannini. Many curlies avoid texture sprays because they've got a bit of a bad rap because they can be drying on your hair due to the ingredients that they have in them. So I wouldn't recommend them for coarse hair or hair that's naturally very dry, but if you have silky roots or soft hair and you lack volume or hold in your hair, then I would definitely recommend trying a texture spray out. Next up is hairspray. So as I'm sure you know, hairsprays add long lasting hold to the hair, helping to either Either lock your hairstyle in place or lock your curl definition in place for longer between wash days and similar to texture sprays hairsprays have had a bit of a bad reputation when it comes to curly hair because again the ingredients can be quite drying on curly hair but there are now some hairsprays that are designed with curly hair in mind so they're not as drying as traditional hairsprays and they can actually be really beneficial for helping your curls last longer and I have become obsessed with hairsprays the main hairsprays that I use are are the Bounce Curl Hairspray and the Curl Smith Flawless Finish. These are two very different products to be used differently. So the Bounce Curl Hairspray, I would say is more of a spray gel because you get best results when you use this one on wet hair. It's much less sticky when you use it on wet hair as a spray gel, but it gives really, really good long lasting definition and hold. It gives a good cast on the hair. And then that Curl Smith Hairspray is to be used on dry hair as a final step in your routine. This not only adds long lasting hold I also really find it helps to find my curls so I'm really actually obsessed with this hairspray I use it at the end of pretty much every wash day now even when I've just got a curl cream in my hair or I've just got a bit of heat protecting it in my hair I'll spray this and it really just helps to find my curls and just add a level of definition and hold to my hair that regardless of how I've sold my hair it just looks good. Do not sit on hairspray if you have naturally soft hair or loose curls that fall out very easily because it's a really good product and it can really up your curl game. Next up is oils. Oils and finishing serums like this one are great for adding shine to your hair, taming frizz and locking in moisture when used as a final step on wash day. They're also great at adding lubrication and slip to your hair which can help prevent tangles and matting between wash days and that is the main reason that I use them. I like to use 
a couple of drops at the end of a wash day and I'll mix it together on my hands and literally just put it on the underneath section of my hair, especially now that it's cold and we're wearing coats and scarves. We can get a lot of matting on the underneath section of our hair, so it just really adds a little bit of slip, prevents tangling and matting on the underneath of our hair, and yeah, I just find that very beneficial. And hair oils are another product that have got a bit of a bad reputation over the years for curly hair, because when they're not used in the right way, they can lock moisture out and lead to dry hair and product build up. But when you use them in the right way for your hair and you cleanse your hair properly, using them can be really beneficial for a lot of people. So it's really just about how you use them and also not using too much for your hair. I've said before, my hair is low porosity, so I really only need to use the tiniest amount of oil. Literally like one to two drops is enough for my hair or my hair can tend to get a little bit weighed down and stringy with them. If you have high porosity hair, you can get away with using more oil. And it's actually really beneficial if you have damaged hair to finish off with an oil at the end of wash day. I can hear you screaming from the rooftops, do I need to use all of these products to get good results? And the answer is simply no. Many people like to combine a variety of products to get the best level of moisture, definition, and hold for their hair. And obviously everyone's hair is different, so what works for one person may not work for another. Some people may have naturally very dry hair that needs a lot of moisture, so they use a leave-in, a curl cream, and a gel to lock it all in. Whereas someone else may just get away with using a mousse on their hair because they really like to have a more voluminous, lived-in look. Or maybe they don't need the extra definition and moisture in their hair. So the whole point of styling products that we leave in our hair are to protect our hair between wash days, keep our hair healthy, but also to enhance our curls and keep them looking nice for as long as possible so we can stretch our wash days and minimize refreshes. But there isn't a rule when it comes to how many products to apply. It really is down to personal preference and what works for your unique hair. I guess it can seem like a lot of hair routines that you watch online use tons of products and you may be sitting there watching videos thinking, my hair would feel absolutely gross if I use that much product. And if that's the case, don't use that much product. Do whatever works for your hair. It really is down to personal preference, but every product has a different purpose, but you need to experiment to find out what works best for you. And I think that is enough product chat for one video, but let me know in the comments if you found this video helpful and what your favorite styling products are for your curly hair. As always, if you did enjoy the video, please feel free to give it a like, leave a comment, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you soon. Bye, guys.